And now, today's adventure of Outer Scope One, Crash Landing. Hi, I'm Willie. Me and my friends are inside a spaceship, Outer Scope One. We built it ourselves and, oh man, were we surprised when we found ourselves flying through space. And now it looks like we're going to crash. crash into something. I can't. It's too late. We're going to fail. We're going to crash. Oh, my gosh. We've hit something. Is everybody okay? I'm okay, Willie. I'm all right. Me too. Well, I'm so upset, I'll never recover. My poor nerves. Hey, Cynthia, where's Betty? Hello. Look, there she is. Here, Betty, come down. Everything's OK now. Here she comes. Come on, Betty. Hello. Oh, my poor Betty. And I thought I was upset. I want to go home. We all like to go home, Henry. But first, we better go out and check for damages. I'll go, Willie. You stay with the ship, just in case. Gee, it's really strange out there. It doesn't look like anything I've ever seen before. Ick. I don't like it. No trees or grass or anything. Only a lot of bare rocks. Not even a speck of color. Hey, Willie, it looks like the ship is stuck against a big rock. Oh, no. Okay, Edgar, we're coming out. Oh, boy, it'll be like a moonwalk. I can't wait to explore. Wait a minute. What are you taking, Willie? Stale bread. Stale bread? What for? It's to make a trail. Oh, just like the Hansel and Gretel story. Breadcrumbs to find our way back to the ship. Good idea, Willie. I'd hate to get lost out there. Wow, it's really hot and steamy. Ready? Push! This place looks so empty. There's no sign of people. Yeah, who'd want to live here anyway? Push! <sighs> Boy, it sure is stuck. Maybe I can find something that'll help. Ugh, it won't budge. Hey, look what I found. What? What is it? What, what? is it? What? Is what? It? A path. That's the funniest looking path I ever saw. It's all made out of tiles, black and white tiles. Let's follow it. But maybe it will lead us into danger. That's true, it might. But we've got to try it. Don't worry, I'll go first and protect you. I want to go first, and it's my right. I found the path. But I'm stronger, Eleanor. I can defend us better if there's trouble. Stop it, you guys. Who says it's going to be trouble anyway? Cynthia, it looks like a mouse, but... But what? But it seems to be talking. I go here, I go there. Cleaning, cleaning everywhere. <laughs> hey, I'm going to catch it. <coughs> Henry, come back. <coughs> over hill, over dale, at cleaning dirt, I never fail. <coughs> Are you okay, Henry? Yeah, I'm okay. But that was no mouse, Cynthia. It was a slippery bar of soap. Oh, come on, Henry. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Look! 
I know what it looks like, but it just can't be. Look! This isn't good. This isn't good at all. We can't be sure. They may be friendly. They certainly don't look friendly. They're all around us. I don't like this. Let's get out of here. We're surrounded. I want to go home. They're coming after us. To be continued. Next time, the march to the throne. It's time to tell a story. It's storytelling time. Big dog, and that's the little dog. There's a song about it. My mother used to sing to me when I was about your age, and she learned it from her mother. I sing you a song about them in Japanese. Okina wan wan chicha na wan 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 to nakeba. Okina wan wan chicha na wan 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 to naku. Itsu mo. Nakayoshi, otomodachi. Wong Wong! Okay, you be the big dog and you be the little dog, all right? And when I go Wong Wong, you bark in Japanese. Here we go. Big little Wong Wong, small little Wong Wong. Wong 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 Wong. Big little Wong Wong, small little Wong Wong. Wong 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 Wong. Always such chum. Always great pals. Oh wow, wow, wow! Always friends. Whoa, whoa! Hey, I tell you what. Come on, doggies. Let's go for a walk. Come on. Yeah. This way. I grew up in this country. Let's stand over here. So, I used to sing "Rain, Rain, Go Away," but when my grandmother was a little girl in Japan, she used to make these little dolls and hang them up on the eaves of her house, and she'd sing "Teru Teru Bozu Teru Bozu Teru Teru Bozu Teru Bozu." Make tomorrow a bright sunny day, like the day I dreamed of so long, long ago. If you make it sunny. I'll give you a silver bell. Teru teru bozu, teru bozu, teru teru bozu, teru bozu. Ashita tenki ni shite okure, itsu ka no yume. Hey kids, I don't think it's working. Look, it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> What do you want to be when you grow up? 
what do you want to be? Scene two, take one. Hello, my name is John Wong and I work in the movie industry. My job is being assistant to the cameraman. We're making a movie today about a race car driver. Why don't you come on along and watch us work? Now that I've already cleaned and inspected the camera body, I can mount the lens. This camera can hold three lenses at one time. Next, I attach the matte box. It works like a sunshade, protecting the lens from bright sun rays, which can sometimes damage the picture. Well, the camera's ready to be fastened down on a tripod. That's Ricardo. He's our director. Later, you'll meet the rest of our film crew. Everything is all set here, huh? Yeah, the camera comes up. Next, I mount the film magazine onto the camera. I lock it down, then carefully thread the film into the proper places, making sure not to bend or tear the film in any way. I connect the power cord, and we're ready for action. Here, I'm making sure that the camera is running at its proper speed of 24 frames per second. Camera's ready. That's John. He's our cameraman and the person I work directly with. It's my job to assist okay. him and to make sure that the camera is always clean and in top working condition. Do you know what the next shot is? I don't know. While the director the is setting up the next the shot, uh -huh. I mark the slate. This will be scene eight, take two. Uh, right here, John? Uh, let me take a look. Probably good right here. Well, it looks like we're ready to begin filming. Okay, we all ready? Come forward. Camera's ready. All right, roll sound. That's fine, right there. Speed. Okay. Slated. Slated. Speed eight. Take two. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay. In this scene, it is my job to keep the race car in perfect focus as it moves towards us. This is when the cameraman and I really must work together as a team. Almost as if we were one person. Oh, so long. I hope you've enjoyed your day watching a film crew at work. Zai Jen, and I again. Real people, I'd like to introduce you to some real people. Real people. My name is Martin. You don't have to be afraid of my pet snake, Nigel. He never bites. How did it go today, Martin? Oh, it went really fine. I thought Nigel would get scared in front of the classroom of kids, but he didn't. 
He acted really cool. Really kept his wits. Did Mr. Moorhead make a speech about snakes today? No, he didn't. The funny thing was, he said that I probably knew more about snakes than he did, so he let me give the speech. Yeah, Martin made a speech in front of the class. How about that? Well, see you later, Martin. Okay, I'll see you later, DJ. I'll call you up. Great. Well, sounds like you were the star of the science class today. Yeah, I guess you could say that. But there was one kid that really didn't like it. Oh, Pat. He said that Nigel was just another way for me to show off. You know how some people can be jealous, and you have a very special kind of pet. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Harris? Mrs. Harris, this is an emergency. I I'm really frantic. Oh, this is Mrs. Barrington, Pat's mother. You know, he's in your Martin's class. Well, anyway, you must tell me quickly, what's the best antidote for snake bite? What? Snake bite? You must be an expert in this thing. Your son has a snake, doesn't he? Yes, he does. I want you to know that that snake bit my pet, and I, I'm holding you fully responsible. Well, I'm taking him to the doctor, but I want to know what to do in the meantime. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't know what to tell you, and Martin's not here. Are you sure it was my son's snake? He never lets him loose. Really, Mrs. Harris? How many pet snakes are there in the neighborhood? Pat tells me it happened on the way home from school. Uh, there are two small holes in his hand, and they're turning blue. I can't talk to you anymore, but I am holding you fully responsible. Well, now it's really happened. The thing I've always been afraid of. One of Martin's classmates was bitten by Nigel. Bitten by a boy? I really don't think that's likely. Maybe they're just trying to give their black neighbors a tough time. Did she sound white? What? John, sometimes you find prejudice in some of the strangest places. Why would the boy make up a story like that? His mother was frantic. Hello? Oh, is this Dr. Rice for service? Oh, this is Mrs. Barrington. Will you have him call 755-3019 as soon as possible? It's an emergency. Snake bite. I bet we could sue them. Maybe I should call the emergency room at the hospital. They'd know what to do. How do you feel, honey? I feel funny, that's all. I don't want to go to the hospital. I'm too weak. Mrs. Harris was no help at all, and, and Martin isn't home. Unreliable. Completely unreliable. We should make them get rid of that dumb snake of theirs. If you're too weak, I, I should call an ambulance. No, no, no. Just give me a whiskey. That's what the cowboys always do. How we look at those tooth marks. Hey, it's getting kind of dark outside. Yes, Ma. Scott, I, it's getting kind of dark outside, and I think um, I better go home. Yeah, it's I think around it's dinner time, man. If you want to have some pizza with me, you're welcome to it. But you better call your mother first. Oh, hey, that'll be great. Tell her that I'll take you home. Okay, thanks. Mom, um, Scott invited me. Martin, I've been frantic. Where are you? Oh, but Scott. One of your classmates has been bitten by Nigel. What? Yes, that's right. That's impossible, Mom. Impossible? Well, Pat Barrington has two holes in his hand. And we're responsible for what happens to that boy. Mom, I just pray he's going to be all right. He couldn't have, he couldn't have been bitten. Martin, that's Mom, enough. I don't want to he hear couldn't any more. Have been that bitten. snake has got to go. What's the matter, Martin? Nigel again? Mm-hmm. My mother says, um, kid, this kid in my class, Pat ha Barrington, says that he, he's been bitten by Nigel and he has two holes in his hand. Well, you know that's impossible, man. I tried to tell my mother, but she wouldn't listen. Okay, why don't you call and let me talk to her, all right? All right. I think it would be better if we called Mrs. Barrington, because she's the one we really need. All right, dial in number. Uh... Hello? Hello, Mrs. Barrington. This is Scott Richardson from the museum. We met a few days ago at the Harris house. Yes. But, Mrs. Barrington, that's impossible. Uh, I suspect if you see fang marks... Well, okay, all right. Uh, we'll meet you at the doctor's office as soon as we can get there. Can I have the address? That's good. And if Dr. Rice doesn't know what to do, that snake man from the Newark Museum will know. He's probably been bitten a hundred times. Well, well, don't 
don't be surprised if, if he says it isn't really a snake bite. What on earth makes you say that? Well, Martin's going to say that the snake didn't really bite me, and and he'll have to support his story. I mean, they have to stick together, don't they? No, I don't think he'd do that. Would he? Hello, Miss Bryant. Dr. Hello, Pat. Thank goodness. Well, let's see what we have here. At... Tell me, what happened? Well, you see, there's this kid named Martin, and he carries a snake around in a bag. And he dared me to put my hand in, so I did, and it bit me. What kind of a snake was it? A big one, a real big one. Well, it would help to know what kind of a snake it was. Nevertheless, we'll have to make a little cut right here. No, wait a no, moment. Don't I, don't I feel don't better, worry. please. No, if you will okay, keep, really, I do want to. Okay. Excuse me. That's the snake man. The snake man? Hello, doctor. I'm Scott Richardson from North Oh, Eastern. how do you do? This is Barrington. Mr. Richardson. May I look at Pat's hands? Yes, of course. Mm-hmm. Let me assure everyone now that Pat is in no danger. Martin has a boa constrictor, and boas have no fangs and no venom. Uh, they do have teeth, a row of teeth slightly slanted towards the back, and they very seldom bite. As far as the fang marks, I think Pat better tell us about that. Well, I, I was working on my train layout, and I wanted to check if there were any staples left in my staple gun. So I accidentally hurt my hand and that's when I thought of Martin and the way he'd been showing off his snake in class today so I thought I'd get him scared a little. What about me? What about scaring me half to death? I was gonna tell you mom, I, honest, it just happened so fast. Maybe I was a little jealous about Martin's snake. Staple gun, probably dirty also. I think we'll have to give you a tetanus shot. Uh, you see how Nigel's teeth would be slanted yes. backwards? Yeah. Now, if Pat had been bitten by Nigel, he wouldn't have had two marks there. He would have had quite a few marks. Right, uh, only poisonous snakes have the two fangs and would leave two marks there. Scott, you're staying for dinner. You really don't have to do that. Well, that's the least we can do, considering the fact that you've saved our lives again. Besides, you've shown us that we really don't know enough about Nigel. I'm sorry we didn't believe you, son. That's okay, Dad. My buddy here is learning how to deal with people and their suspicions and fears. And we're just going to have to keep showing them, right? Right. I think we should have a toast. Yeah. Here's to Nigel. To Nigel. To Nigel. To Nigel. Hey, what happened to the lights? Hi, this is Woody, and you're in for a thrill. We're gonna make a treat from Brazil. Brazilian Americans think it's neat to make dose. It's a treat. Dose is candy, if you please, in the language of Brazil, which is Portuguese. Take three cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips. One six-ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. of vanilla. And then we need a pinch of salt and half a cup of brown nuts. If you want, first melt the chocolate on top of a double boiler. You need an older person to help you out when the going gets hot. Then remove from the heat and add the other ingredients. Now stir until the mixture is smooth. Next, get an eight-inch square pan. Do, ooh, do. Then line the pan with wax paper. And turn the mixture evenly onto the pan with the paper. Now, when you have spread the mixture out, smooth as can be without a doubt, put it in the refrigerator and chill for two hours. Next, turn the candy out on a cutting board. Peel the paper off and cut it up. Brazilian fudge is so good! Yeah! What makes people get suntan? Well, almost everybody likes to and can get a suntan. 
no matter how dark or light their normal skin color is. We all get different amounts of suntan, however. And some of us show our suntans more than others. Where does the extra color come from? Well, it comes from the same stuff that gives you your natural color. It's called melanin. Underneath the surface of your skin, a whole lot of tiny brown dots of melanin give you your color from the time you're born. Melanin protects your body from the sun. Something like sunglasses protect your eyes. If you don't have very many melanin dots in your skin, then you don't have very much protection. But if you have a lot of melanin, then you have more protection. These first melanin dots soak up some of the sun's rays. But after you're out in the sunlight for a while, your body begins to make extra melanin to take care of the emergency. This extra melanin is your suntan and stays with you as long as you get a lot of sun. It usually goes away in the winter. Isn't it silly that some people don't like black or brown people to swim with them, but want to get as brown as they can themselves? It sure is. We're not the same, Luther. My skin is pink. Yours is brown. My hair is curly. Mine is straight. My nose is round. Mine is pointed. <laughs> It's funny how we're so different and still so much the same. Oh!